May the 18th, 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted. It was awesome. It, I just didn't want to tear my eyes away from it. I mean, it just took the woods and they were gone. I thought for sure I was dead. Astonishingly, he lived to tell the tale. Many of those around him did not. I never really thought I'd believe this or, or say this, but at this moment, I honest to God believe I'm dead. The whole top of the mountain was ripped off. 57 lives were lost, and all in front of the TV cameras. This was the best documented volcanic eruption of all time, the starting point for modern volcanology. Now scientists have been able to work out what went on deep inside the mountain. The second by second sequence of events that triggered the biggest explosion ever seen in the United States. Disasters don't just happen. They are the result of a sequence of events locked together in time. The science behind what went wrong is hidden in these seismic seconds. For over 120 years before that fateful morning in 1980, Mount St. Helens was an American beauty, hidden away in the northwest corner of the United States. At its feet was Spirit Lake, whose clear water and wooded shores had attracted generations of tourists. Geologists, however, were more wary. To them, Mount St. Helens spelt danger, the youngest and most active of the volcanoes called the Cascades. For all its beauty, it was just a great cone of rubble formed from layers and layers of volcanic debris. But the last eruption had been back in 1857, and since then the mountain had slumbered. People forgot. Few even realized any longer that it was a volcano. Knew nothing about the simmering energy being held back beneath the mountain's fragile plug of ice and rock. But the geologists did. We basically believe that the past is the key to the future. So when a volcano proceeds to erupt over a period of hundreds of thousands of years, and it's still erupting every few thousand years or every few hundred years, there's no reason to assume that, we'll, that it will stop. The 123 years of peace ended on Thursday, March the 20th, 1980. That day, scientists recorded an earthquake directly underneath Mount St. Helens. It was to be the first of more than 10,000 earthquakes that would shake the mountain over the next two months. One of the best uh, signals for volcanologists that an eruption is about to happen is that you start to see a real buildup in these earthquakes because the magma's fighting its way up to the surface. Beneath the Cascade Mountains, enormous pressure had turned the Earth's rocks into magma, a red-hot, viscous liquid. This magma was seeking a way to the surface. It probed every crack in the Earth's crust above it, pushing and smashing the rocks in its path. This was what was causing the earthquakes beneath Mount St. Helens. The magma was on its way. Even though in textbooks uh, it looks like there's just a soda straw that goes from the top of the volcano down to the magma reservoir, uh, in reality you probably have a, a numerous network of, of cracks. So it's probably a very complex network with little fingers working their way upward and eventually uh, they'll coalesce into something that's vaguely pipe-like. But at the end of March something happened. 
As the magma surged up the inside of the volcano, its path was blocked. Lava from previous eruptions had hardened into a solid plug, which wouldn't budge. Instead, the magma was diverted to the north side of the mountain. There it stopped and began to grow into a huge seething bubble inside the mountain, called a cryptodome. call something that actually comes out on the surface a dome, and crypto means hidden. Uh, it was a hidden dome because it, it was just barely below the surface. The bubble continued to grow, inflated by the arrival of more magma from below. By March, the bubble had grown so much that it began to push out the side of the volcano. Scientists on the surface watched as a bulge appeared on Mount St. Helens' northern flank. It was growing at a rate of six feet a day. This is the first time that scientists from the U.S. Geological Survey <clears throat> had ever seen an intrusion into the upper part of an edifice like Mount St. Helens. So we were quite excited about this event. Um, excited on the one hand and nervous on the other hand. Eight, four, five. Their excitement grew in late March, when the volcano started to throw out plumes of ash, a sure sign that it had come back to life. For the first time, the general public woke up to the fact that Mount St. Helens was a living volcano, and that it was going to erupt. Soon the media descended on the mountain. Mount St. Helens became the star of every news broadcast. In Washington state, Mount St. Helens is now showing all the signs leading to a full-scale eruption, and scientists say it could come at any time. If it does go, geologists say it'll be spectacular, dwarfing current eruptions. People here generally are impatient for the real fireworks to start. On March the 31st, a state of emergency was declared. The government set up a 20-mile exclusion zone around the volcano. Spirit Lake and Mount St. Helens is my life, folks. I've lived there 50 years. It's a part of me. But some refused to go. 84-year-old local character Harry Truman had lived on Spirit Lake for more than 50 years and refused to budge. In the media frenzy that followed, he became a national hero. No, I'm not going to leave. <laughs> Damn right, I'm not going to leave. I'm going to stay here. Others just outside the security zone, loggers like Jim Schmanke and his three workmates, worked on, unconcerned, in the shadow of the mountain. Well, I mean, we knew it had been acting up, and uh, <laughs> they were trying to keep all the tourists away from the mountain. We weren't worried about it because we were a long way from it. But the volcano stubbornly refused to erupt. Soon the spectators and the news crews lost interest. Mount St. Helens faded from the headlines. Most of the scientists packed their bags and went home. A lone volcanologist, David Johnston, was left behind to keep an eye on the volcano. It could be within hours, it could be within days or, or even up to a couple of months. On the night of May 17th, he was stationed five miles north of the mountain. It's historic eruptions and uh, older eruptions, prehistoric, have been very explosive. On the near flanks, where we are right now, would likely be covered by avalanches of very hot debris, uh, up to 1,000 degrees centigrade. By the morning of May the 18th, the ominous bulge protruded 300 feet from the north flank of the mountain. Hidden beneath its surface was the seething bubble of magma, now under enormous pressure. As long as the bulge remained in place, it acted as a lid, preventing the magma's escape. As long as you can keep the lid on, then you, you've, got, uh, your, you've got a primed bomb. Uh, as soon as you remove that lid, then you all of a sudden can depressurize it, and when it depressurizes, you're going to cause lots of little bubbles to form and you'll get a very catastrophic expansion of the material.